Shabbat Shalom. Hope everybody is having a good Sabbath day. Today, we're talking about your love for Yah. How much do you truly love Yah? Let's talk about it. Glory to the Most High, Yah. Thank you guys for tuning in to another episode, man. On this Sabbath day teaching, we're going to dive right in. I'm going to hit you with a lot of scriptures because uh, I want to bridge the gap on, you know, what is commonly taught and get you further, further in your obedience, in your discipline. So when we think about, you know, modern culture, modern society, we look at the statistics on how many people are religious, how many people are spiritual, you know, you will find out that the average person, if you ask them, they will say that they love God. But we're going to look at, you know, some some statistics and then we're going to get into some scriptures to show you that, you know, there is more to be done. There is more commitment. There is more obedience. There is more sacrifice. So let's look at this. This was a, a, a study done by the Foundation of American Society. It says for a majority of Americans, the Ten Commandments are not set in stone according to the U.S. Today's poll. 60% of Americans cannot name five of the Ten Commandments. In fact, it was amazing what Americans do know by comparisons. And I, you know, at one point in time, I was definitely in this category because I would have told you that I love the Most High Yah. But if you would have asked me, you know, what were some of the commandments and things like that, I would have probably been able to name maybe two at most, two or three at most. So continue on, you know, what Americans do know by comparison is 74% of Americans can name all three stooges out of the three stooges, Mo, Larry, and Curly. 35% of Americans can recall six kids from the Brady Bunch. Classic show. 25% of Americans can name all seven ingredients of the McDonald's Big Mac. And the sad thing about this is, let's continue, only 14% can accurately name all 10 commandments, yet 78% of Americans in favor of public display of the commandments, meaning they're, you know, they're, they're favoring the 10 commandments, but it's ironic that Americans affirm the 10 commandments, but cannot name them. So when we think about this, where, where is the knowledge gap? If we're not being taught to be obedient, if we're not taught you know, on a regular basis, what the commandments are, how can we live out this? So let me get into the scripture because this is going to be a good one. So we're looking at John chapter 14, verse 21. This is a, a great starting point for this because, you know, uh, America is almost like the Baskin Robbins of, you know, of religion. And there's so many different flavors, but you'll find in scripture that there's only, only one way to get to the father, only, only one way to get to the most high. So in John chapter 14, verse 21, whoever has my commandments and keeps them, he, it is who loves me and who, who loves me will be loved by my father. And I will love him and manifest myself in him. That means if you're keeping the commandments, this is how you show your love for God. But all too often, you know, this this right here isn't taught and we end up giving lip service. And this is why really the, the, the spirit can't dwell in us because, you know, we're not seeking out his righteousness. We're not seeking out to live holy, to live set apart and to live by the commandments. So think about that study that, uh you know, that think about those statistics that I just gave you on what the. American population does actually know more of, but when it comes to, you know, righteousness and understanding the Ten Commandments and being able to know what they are, this is something that we place at a very low priority. But again, like I've said in countless videos, my goal is to get you to focus on, you know, obedience, the sacrifice and the true love of God and hoping that you have, you know, ears to hear, you know, ears to receive and not just being, uh, you know, a spectator. So let's keep pushing forward. When we look at Matthew chapter 5, 17, you know, this is a, a, another foundational scripture to help us continue to build on on why, 
you know, it's important that we live by the law, statutes and the commandments. Matthew 5, 17, think not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. When we think of the Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach, coming to earth in the flesh, this right here was the fulfillment of the law because people were struggling to fulfill it. So he came forth to give an example for us to follow, for us to strive after, because even, even the prophets, even the apostles were getting it wrong. OK, as we move on, you know, there are a lot of people out there that, you know, get stuck in the prosperity, get stuck in the hope, the grace. And nobody is teaching the obedience. Nobody is teaching the commandments, the laws and the statutes. A lot of what is being taught is more of everybody is nowadays a prophet, you know, telling you that you're going to get a new house. You're going to get a new car. God is going to bless you with money in your bank account, X, Y and Z. But what you're getting very little of is very little scriptural substance. That's why I'm, I'm I'm diving back into scripture and giving you this to tell you why you don't want to be stuck in the prosperity, which is ultimately it's the milk and it's not the meat. So first Samuel 15 verse 22 and Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifices as, as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to listen than the fat of rams. So rather than just giving the sacrifice, he wants your obedience, the adherence to his law, statutes and commandments. When we look at scripture, you know, seldomly do you hear the scripture of, you know, God blesses the, the just just as well as the unjust. But if you're stuck in hope, if you're stuck in prosperity, you know, you're going to be wasting all of your time on this earth you know, praying for things that are pleasing to the flesh. So when ultimately, in order to please the most high, you're going to have to deny your flesh of everything that it wants. So let's read Matthew chapter five, verse 45. So that may be the sons of your father who is in heaven, for he makes the sun rise on the evil and on the good and sends rain on the just and on the unjust. So that basically means he blesses the just just as well as the unjust. And what is going to set you apart, you know, is you following the law, statutes and the commandments. It just that right there is what makes you an obedient child of God. So when we think about it, you know, we live in a society right now where nobody wants to talk about sin. They love to talk about grace. They love to talk about prosperity. But when you start talking about sin, you notice a spirit of rebellion and people, you know, are sensitive in this area. They don't embrace correction and when you don't embrace correction, how can you how can you grow? And the correction is where you can start to walk upright, start to walk righteously as a man or woman. But it ha you have to be corrected and you don't want to live a life of just trials and tribulations thinking you can self correct when it was never intended for you to do that. The spirit has to be upon you, that spirit of obedience, that spirit of wanting to, you know, sacrifice for the, the glory of the most high Yah you know, for, foremost, well before you do anything pleasing to yourself. So in first John chapter three, verse four, let's talk about what sin is, because uh, when you you ask the average person looking at the statistics that we talked about, oftentimes people don't know what sin is and they don't know how to explain it. And they're often not studied on it. And it's very uncommon because I was once like this, living a very sinful and lawless life. Only difference between now is I'm still a sinner. I still struggle every day, but I'm a saved sinner, you know, focused on righteousness, trying to have the Holy Spirit move in my life to make me more disciplined in practicing righteousness. So first John chapter three, verse four, everyone who makes a practice of sinning also practice lawlessness. Sin is lawlessness. That's what it is. So again, like in the title, I asked, you know, are you just giving lip service when you say, you know, you, you love God, you fear God? What is your what is your love for him? How do you show it? How does the Most High Yah demand and command us to show our love for him? Let's keep pushing forward. First Samuel 15, 22. And Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, it is better to obey, it is better than sacrifice and to listen to the fats of rams. He wants your obedience. Right now, we're living in 
uh, a, a time of rebellion, a time of lawlessness. And who is going to be the one to get people focused back on righteousness? Because when you think about scriptures talking about God knocking on your door, we have put God outside and we continuously shut the door in his face because we don't want to be obedient. We don't want to sacrifice. We just want to rebel and do everything that's pleasing to our flesh. But that in itself is not a, a love for God. It's more of a love for everything that you see valuable, everything that you see fit. And we're getting, like I said, we're getting in scripture because this is not, uh, you know, a prosperity type message where it's emotionally charged and very, very uh, little scripture. I got to give you all the scripture so you can you can walk upright because you have two different crowds out there. You have you have non-believers and you have believers. But then when you look at believers, you have some that are lukewarm. They're not turned on. Their power isn't turned on. They're, they're, they're stuck in the prosperity. They're, th they're stuck in the grace, but they don't take for a second and think that it's because his mercy that, you know, we don't get the penalty of the law. Imagine for your sin. Imagine for living lawless as we all are. We're all sinners. Imagine being stoned to death for some of your sin. It was because of the Messiah, Yahshua Hamashiach, that when he died on that cross, we no longer have to pay that penalty. But the Most High Yah is still expecting our obedience. So Deuteronomy chapter four, verse 40. Therefore, you shall keep his statutes and his commandments, which I command you today, that it may go well with you and your children after you, and that it may prolong your days in the land that the Lord your God is giving you for all time. It's telling us to keep the statutes and the commandments. But you have a lot of religious theologians and scholars that will tell you that the commandments have been, you know, done away with. The law has been done away with. And when you teach that kind of message, you're getting people further away from righteousness, which is following the law, statutes and the commandments. When we look at, you know, when we continue to study out of Deuteronomy and we get into chapter six, verses four through seven, this is going to continue. Drop that point home that we are to Follow the law, statutes, and the commandments. Hear, O Israel, the Lord, O God, the Lord is one. You shall love your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength. Not a, not a bit of your heart, not a piece of your heart, not a fraction of your soul, not just a little bit, a tenth of your strength, all of your strength. So when you say you love the Most High Yah, when you say you love God, you, you, you better mean it because the instructions are clear as day. And these words which I command you today shall be in your heart. This is the this is the holy scriptures. This is the law. This is the statutes. This is the commandments. You shall teach them diligently with your children. Think about that. We're supposed to pass this on to our children, the law, statutes, and the commandments, because if we don't pass this on and we don't talk about this when we sit in our house and when we're walking, you know, we're, we're pretty much setting the example of lawlessness and not righteousness. Here's another one. Here's another scripture in Matthew chapter 22, talking about the love of the most high Yah and, you know, what this looks like. Matthew chapter 22, verses 37 through 40. Then he said to them, you shall love the Lord, your God, with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments depend all the law and all the prophets. So this is very important right here because these are the first two commandments, but they are the greatest two commandments. There's no point in you getting to any other commandments if you can't keep these first two. And it's talking about the love of the Most High Yah, loving him with all your heart, loving him with all your strength and your mind. Moving on, and I'm going to further make this, you know, this this message even more concrete with more scripture in Mark chapter 12, verses 30 through 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. These are the commandments. And when you think about that, if you love him with all your heart, then you're going to be obedient. You're going to strive for a life of righteousness. You're going to try to your absolute best to follow the law, statutes and the commandments. So earlier, earlier, you know, at the beginning of this video, I talking about in order to live righteous, you have to be willing to deny your flesh of the thing that it wants, because your flesh, you know, the, the, the satanic demonic spirits that are naturally in us 
our lustful spirit is going to draw us everywhere except righteousness. So we're going to even we're going to bolt this one down with more scripture of Romans chapter eight, verse 13. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. But if the spirit you put to death, the misdeeds of the body, you will live. And it's talking about denying yourself of what your flesh desires, because your flesh desires one thing and your spirit man desires something else. It desires the Holy Spirit. It desires to live a life of righteousness. It is the void that we have to fill with righteousness. So when you think about that, you know, I know a lot of people, uh, you may be tuning in and you may come from a, 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 you know, a religious background. And I've told you in some of these later videos that, you know, the goal is, is, is not to give you a religious message, but to give you a doctrinally sound message. And if you come from one of these backgrounds where you're not hearing, you know, the absolute truth, you're not hearing, you know, the scripture based upon sound teaching and sound doctrine, chances are you're here and you've experienced a knowledge gap. You feel stagnated. You still feel like there's a void there that needs to be filled. You feel like, you know, you could be doing more. There is more obedience required. And I told you guys, you know, that one of the main thing the devils like to use, one of his main tactics is confusing you. You know, the Sabbath day teaching last week, we got into all the different historical starting points of religion and then how it's very easy to get so lost in this when this stuff isn't even biblical. It is the traditions of man. It is the way of the heathen. And we have been we have been, you know, instructed to not follow after the way of the heathen, after their, you know, vain traditions, their philosophies, their ideologies and things like that. So today I gave you just a, a scriptural message. And if you have a love for God, you know, that should be coupled with, you know, a spirit of wanting to obey, a spirit of wanting to be corrected, wanting to be chastened because you're not going to get everything right. And one thing about this is we live in a a generation where everybody like like I gave you the statistics, everybody, you know, thinks they know just a little bit. And they say, well, you know, the Bible says not to judge, but, you know, they miss the whole other half of that scripture. You know, we're all going to have to face the judge. We're all going to, you know, face that judgment day. And if you have fallen the way of the world and you think that's right and promoting that to everybody and you're safe, then I guess we're all going to be safe. But if you're wrong, you know, ultimately you're going to have hell to pay because when you think about this, the scripture tells us to judge righteously. You have to have a discerning eye in order to be able to judge. No, you're not the end all be all, but in order to rebuke brothers and sisters, in order for us to dwell around sisters and saint, do you not think that there has to be some correction? But we live in a day and age where people, you know, get super offended whenever you address them in righteousness and out of love, because if you didn't love them, you wouldn't say anything. If you didn't love them, you wouldn't say anything. But, you know, you can't get stuck in the, you know, God is going to give you this. God is going to give you this, give you that, give you a house, give you a car, because that is the grace message. But it's by his mercy that for the sins that you do commit, you don't get stoned to death. That's one thing, you know, you don't hear too often. And like I said, more than anything, more than the sacrifice of what you say you did for him. I did this for you. I did that for you. The scripture, first Samuel chapter 15, verse 22, it states, and Samuel said, has the Lord as great delight in burnt offerings and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord. Behold, it is better to obey than sacrifice and listen to the fats of arms. So if you truly love the most high Yah and the, the, the sacrifice that his son, Yahshua HaMashiach, has paid for us so we don't get the penalty of the law, then that better be coupled with obedience. And, you know, my main goal is to not tickle your ears or anything like that, because I said, I hope you guys have a receiving spirit, but it's to get you focused on the obedience aspect, because that is what we all have been called to do. If you consider yourself a child of the most high and, you know, I, I, I dare you guys to be rare. I dare you to do something different because when you think about the scripture talking about you will be hated for his namesake, if, you know, when you start being obedient, you'll realize how small your circle is, how much support that you actually have. And if you're not serious about the love of the Most High Yah, if you're not going to be fully committed 10 toes down in this, you're going to end up, you know, going back to the way of the world and 
this is not going to be for you. You're going to be stuck in that, that space of prosperity and not pushing forward in obedience. Right now, there is a, it's almost like a plague, almost like a sickness over believers. They're stuck in a lukewarm stage. And, you know, ultimately the next generation is going to continue to treat the most high y'all like a sugar daddy, not thinking about the sacrifice that has been paid for our life, the price on our life. And only thing we're asked to do is to obey the law, statutes, and the commandments. They're not done away with. They're still in effect. And this is, like I said, the devil's main tactic in confusing you. How much do you truly love the most high Yah? Show him your love through your obedience. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Check out the link in the description because I only shoot at gun barrels straight. Bow.